You can build this entire table with just two tools, but I'm going to use like 11. Seriously though, you could actually build this entire table with just a table saw or a circular saw and a drill. Two tools. Not counting things like tape measures, clamps, glue, and so forth. If I were using just two tools, I'd go with a table saw over the circular saw. Either way, whichever one you use, just make sure that the blade can tilt to 45 degrees. If I were going the table saw route, I would suggest getting the plywood broken down from wherever you bought it. Any store will do it. You could technically do it on your own on a table saw, but it would get a little unwieldy and you'd need a lot of room. We'll start off by making all of our bevel cuts. There really isn't anything too tricky going on here. It's just a bunch of rips and cross cuts with the blade set at 45 degrees. That said, the goal here should be to only ever set your fence to each dimension once. That's gonna yield the cleanest results and save you a lot of headache in trying to dial in the same cut twice or more. So you really wanna pay attention to the order of operation. Let me explain. The entire table is made up of six panels. A center panel that doesn't get a bevel cut, a bottom, top, back, and two sides. Let's just ignore the center panel for now since we're gonna cut that one last anyhow. The top, bottom, and back piece all have the same width, so cut that first. Next, cut the top and bottom to their finished length. Now those two pieces are done, so we can set them aside. Next, cut the back and two sides to their length, I guess we'll call it. Basically, their dimension going this way. Finally, you can cut your sides to their width, or dimension this way. Also, really think about grain orientation before you start cutting anything. It can be really easy to get yourself turned around. There's nothing technically tricky about this build, you just have to be thinking a few steps ahead the whole time. I guess in that regard, it's kind of like the world's most difficult simple project, or the world's most simple difficult project. Either way, with everything other than the center panel cut, we can actually start assembling already. I'm going to start by gluing the back piece and side pieces to the bottom. Here I'm using nothing but glue. I'm literally just spreading the glue on and then holding the piece in place for a minute or so while the glue gets tacky. No clamps, tape, or anything. Don't worry though, we'll come back and reinforce these later. Next I'll install the center panel. Here I'm marking out some lines to make the cuts. In this shot I'm stupidly marking the height based off of the high side of the miter. It should have been based off of the low side of the miter. Luckily, it's a lot easier to make something shorter than it is to make something longer. Here I'm remeasuring based off of the correct dimension. Next, I glued it in. And on this one, I could actually use some clamps. Once that had set up for about 40 minutes, I came back and glued the top piece on. Here I'm going to use a lot of clamps. Mostly because even the flattest plywood usually isn't perfectly, like, machine flat. And when you couple that with miters on every single edge, you're going to end up with gaps somewhere. They're just a lot less of a forgiving joint than something like a butt joint or rabbit might be. But they're prettier, so I put up with them. Anyhow, being able to apply pressure will help pull all those gaps together. So really the clamps are more for aesthetic reasons than structural reasons. Though, I suppose it helps with both. I think most people's natural inclination is to use way too much glue and generally over-engineer things. Honestly, I think if you left this table exactly how it is now, it would probably be fine, but we won't. I measured out a couple spots symmetrically, then installed a few dowels in each miter joint, going each way. So this thing's definitely not coming apart now. With the cabinet out of the way, I turned my attention to the base. This is the first time that I've used hairpin legs on a project, but I'd been wanting to for a while. 
So when Industrial by Design reached out and asked if I'd try out one of their products, I jumped at the opportunity. So these things are just about as easy to use as you would imagine. You pretty much just set them where you want them, mark out the screw holes, pre-drill, and screw them in. The first thing that I noticed when I pulled these things out of the box is that they have this really confidence-inspiring heft. Like you know you're not using something cheap or flimsy that's going to fall apart on you. If you want to try out these exact legs, this is the 6-inch version in raw steel. But you can also get them with a satin black powder coated finish and in a variety of different sizes. The only other thing that the manufacturer recommends if you go with the raw steel is to put some furniture wax on them for extra protection. By the way, you could also paint these any color you like if you want a little extra pop. I'll throw some links to the product and their webpage in the description below. Check them out. They're definitely a good alternative every now and then and great for busting out a project really quickly. Gotta take a second to thank all my Patreon members. I tell ya, the legs on this table may be hairpinned, but for all you guys supporting me, that decision definitely wasn't hairbrained. No, but seriously, thank you guys. And by the way, if anybody's been on the fence about signing up, maybe you were reluctant because of the per project charge thing, good news, I changed it to monthly. So now if you want, you can sign up and you'll know exactly what you're getting into without any kind of ambiguity. If you're interested, there's a link in the description. Check it out, and as always, no pressure. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and tell your friends. Thanks. At the end of the day, it's really hard to say if this is a difficult project or a simple project. It's simple in the fact that there aren't a whole lot of pieces or types of cuts that you have to make. But it's difficult in that almost every cut is crucial. What I mean is, with so many bevel cuts all coming together, any errors you make can really start to compound and become apparent. But I think it's a good project in terms of challenging yourself with a relatively small investment. You really can build this with a pretty modest stable of tools if you wanted. Woodworking can be fun, but really more than anything else, it's rewarding. I think that's the best thing about a project like this. It does a really good job of straddling that line. On one hand, it's quick and easy enough to be fun, but on the other hand, it's still challenging enough for you to look back at it and for it to elicit that feeling that we're all really looking for when we build something. Accomplishment. See you next time.